Okay, warbles on a lot to YouTube with clip three in the forest archaeology series. Now I know I've asserted that this tree had been killed by ring barking because it's got a hollow up the middle of it and then I showed you the ring barking scar on the outside edge of it and we figured out it had at least 30 years between ring barking the first time and getting killed the second time. Here's the chopped up remains of yet another ring bark scarred pole and it had also been ring bark previously 30 years earlier maybe 40 and its root ball contains the hollow rotted out core over here by comparison we have a single growth stringy bark sapling. Call it a sapling because you can even cover the butt with your hand. However, if you have a look in there, there's about 15 years growth of sapwood. So 15, 30, 45. So this is a 60 year old tree. And I don't know what's killed it. Possibly light competition from the other trees. Possibly, when this big one fell, it knocked something else down, which knocked this one down. I'm just not entirely certain, but when it fell, it missed this. That tea tree bush wasn't there. Excuse me. It fell down and on top of here, and it sucker bashed this box tree right so it was a pretty substantial tree crown that fell down through here and of course it fell on top of this pile and I suggest that pile might have been oh, pushed up by a bulldozer in 1960 when they were putting the power line through and when the bulldozer was in the area putting the power line through the farmers either side of the power line easement contracted the crews on the weekends to do a bit of clearing and pushing. And the clearing and pushing stopped here. All of my stuff to the west of here has had a bulldozer on it. About the time I was, well, getting toilet trained really. And maybe, maybe I'm idiosyncratic, but my view is if you own a patch of Australia according to the paperwork, you should be able to explain why it looks the way it looks, what it used to look like, and what you think happened to turn it from the way it was before the sheep and potatoes got released to the way it is now. And I'm responsible for everything alive above the ground. I don't own the mineral rights, I don't own the water rights, I don't own the airspace rights, but if I want to, I can try and make a profit by killing everything that's alive on this block. And the fact is, I don't want to make a profit that bad. I want to make the topsoil grow up to cover the rocks and I want the biomass and the biodiversity to increase during my tenure as the bloke who pays the rates. I've been at it for 21, nearly 22 years now. I don't think I'm doing a bad job. Forest Archaeology, part three. Ciao.